After hearing all the contributions today, I would just like to say welcome to James Finton Lawler Light, um, because uh, I don't have anything political to say. Uh, I have a few gripes to share, um, based on the fact that for a long time I have struggled uh, to keep myself going uh, because of uh, my mental illness, uh, depression, and so I haven't had the ability or the, not even the ability, the wish to involve myself in politics or anything, it just all seems so bloody exhausting when getting up every day and just keeping going was the issue for me and working and earning my living. It was enough to be going on with. So I have a slightly less uh, political, hard-edged, uh, but not the, nevertheless quite cranky um, take on things. So, um, <clears throat> and I just want to start that if James Fenton, Fenton Lawler was a contrarian, well, I'm in the right place. I struggled to find something to say today. I feel a little out of my depth. I don't have an incisive political mind. And although still working in the arts, I'm working outside the tribe. And I'm afraid I don't think a lot of nationalism. I can hear the sound of the gallows being erected outside. So I really had to sit down and work out what I feel passionate about and what vision of Ireland I would come up with. James Finton Lawler cared deeply about our national identity and our freedom to be ourselves. I really wonder what he would make of Ireland today. How have we used that freedom that was so hard won? Every Patrick's Day, a friend of mine waffles on about how great it is to be Irish. What an amazing people we are. And I've got to be honest, every year I'm perplexed. I just don't see it that way. I love the land, the earth of Ireland, the soil of Ireland, but the national persona, I'm not so sure about. For a start, I couldn't even tell you what it is, this Irishness. What is Irishness? Um, let's start maybe teasing it out a bit. What are the signs of Irishness? Red hair and freckles. Most people I know hate red hair. I don't. I think it's lovely. But when have you heard anyone saying, God, I really want to get rid of my straightened, bleached hair extensions, fake tan and false eyelashes, and that's just the men, and become a flame-haired, speckled, gossoon stroke Colleen? Nah, I think that icon went out with Maureen O'Hara. Cuisine? Well, bacon and cabbage with floury potatoes is a great dish. But I think, in urban centres at least, we are more likely to be served a pulled pork panini with leaves than a mammy dinner. The arts? We're always hearing... Hang on, I've gone and skipped myself. Wait a second now. Um, the arts? We're always hearing about the wonderful cultural identity we have. And yes, it's wonderful, I'm sure if it touches your life in any way. Since moving to the country permanently, I have realised that the arts community is largely an urban, moneyed trial, tribe, with very little say, to say to the ordinary man or woman in the street or field, except to write largely unflattering plays about us. Working in the arts while based in rural Ireland is very difficult, and here I will wax bitter and twisted. Having a career and making a living in the arts when you aren't known abroad is very difficult. And I confess, I find it impossible. And so many more talented artists with indigenous careers would echo my sentiments. We're a bit like bacon and cabbage, red hair and freckles. We're not thought enough of out foreign to get work in our own country. While we punch above our weight in most things, or so we are told, I wonder when it happened that we became ashamed of ordinary Irishness. Because, in my view, we have. We have become increasingly urban in our outlook, but we are still largely rural. Once, while herding my sheep, I received a call and was asked to contribute to a radio programme. While we were chatting, a sheep bleated. What's that, the young man said at the other end of the phone. A sheep, I answered. 
How bizarre, the young man said. Yeah, I thought to myself, an Irish field with sheep in it. That's bizarre, all right. Remember I said I had to think about what made me feel passionate? Well, drifting away from the earth, the soil of Ireland, this, what we stand on, is something I feel passionate about preventing. I said I love the earth of Ireland. It's one of my passions. The earth of Ireland may be a resource we own, but that does not mean we have leave to abuse it. And when we forget the land that sustains us, we lose something deeper than our sense of nationality. We lose our humanity. We lose our modesty. We become phone-tapping, iPod-listening, media-mithered egos instead of rounded human beings. We develop a sense of entitlement. We are entitled to comfort and ease without thinking at all about the cost and resources it takes to provide that ease and comfort. Stop padding around your polished wooden floors in your bare feet and t-shirts with the heating cranked up to maximum. Turn down your bloody radiators and put on a jumper, you wusses. As you have probably gathered, I got out of the bed the wrong side this morning. I just can't help being fed up of the cant of defining ourselves as a great little country on a well-oiled St. Paddy's Day. I want us to really live up to that moniker. I'm fed up with artifice and bluster. I'm fed up with us adopting the culture of Britain and America while remaining largely narrow-minded and inward-looking. If you don't think we're narrow-minded and inward-looking, try being a mental health advocate. So, I hear you thinking, is this cranky woman ever going to say anything positive about us? Well, let me tell you a story. About two years ago, my partner was performing at the Festival of the Fires on the hill of Ushnock in Westmeath. Ushnock predates Tara as the seat of kingship in Ireland. It is the reputed burial place of the goddess Eru, and her name is the root of Aaron. It is also the site of the stables of the god Lu. He kept his horses there. It's a high, windy place, and hundreds of tough, dressed-for-the-weather souls had gathered to hear the music. Suddenly, during the performance, a group of horsemen dressed as Celtic warriors galloped over the brow of the hill. They stood for a while, outlined against the sky, regarding us in stillness, and then they galloped away. The sense of wonder among us was palpable. I would venture to say that everyone's heart skipped a beat. Why did this happen, this collective gasp of wonder? I think somewhere between the moment of seeing this sight and processing it as a spectacle, magnificent but not mystical, somewhere in that heart-stopping moment, we glimpsed something that really spoke to the elemental in us, something that signified that wonderful thing, the Irish soul. A soul that knew its true identity, unfettered, dignified, standing in a myth that really gave voice to it. You may say that this is a fluffy vision, but why should it be? That's what really makes me angry. Can this vision not be a template? Can we not make efforts to step into some identity that is not about wealth and status, but about standing and saying this is who we are without boozing and puffing ourselves up and saying things we don't mean and meaning things we don't say. Because if that soul can be birthed, nurtured and treasured, then James Finton Lawler would be proud. And come to think of it, so would I. <laughs>